Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to expand on what we did in the last video where we showed you uh, the very basics of working with a controller. And in this video, we're going to show you some a little bit more that we can do with controllers. In fact, we're going to be putting a small form, we're going to be adding a submit event onto that form, and it's going to be adding uh, names to our current list of people that we have in our directory. So let's check it out right now. So in the last video, we just made our scope variable and then we iterated with the ng repeat that we showed in the first couple of videos. Now, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put a form here and let's actually just do that right down here. We can say form, okay? And I'm gonna leave the action blank for right now. It's going to be an input with a type of text. Uh, I'll just leave a placeholder right now instead of uh, a label. And the placeholder will just say name Okay, and let's go ahead and make another input type and this will just be age, okay? So we now have two inputs. I'm actually going to uh, make this a number so we can say number here. If we check out our page, refresh, okay, name age. Let's go ahead and add a submit button. And we can just do that with a, an input submit uh, type submit and the value will be just be submit here, okay? Now, if you remember when we have done things before where we're trying to take data from an input, we use this ng model. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this ng model and paste it in here. And this ng model will simply just be name. And uh, again, we're going to have another ng model here and this will just simply be age like so. And we have our submit here, okay. Now, you see we just have this basic sort of unstyled form. When you click Submit, uh, it just sort of refreshes the page. Actually, that's sort of a bummer for us because we want this to be big, okay? Cool, so we just have this basic form. Now, how do we get this form to do what we want it to do? And what we want it to do is we want it to somehow add data onto the end of this list. Well, what we can do is remove this form action here and add something, uh, another Angular directive called ng hyphen, and this is going to be submit. Now, if you get the pattern here, our Angular directives are prefixed with this sort of ng hyphen. So we have ng hyphen submit. And now this is going to be the function that's run when we are submitting this form. So we can say add person, just like that. And then since it's a function, we have our parentheses here. Okay, now let's check out our page here. We refresh, we cl click submit, and now you'll notice it's not actually trying to do anything with this form. So this is good, it's sort of preventing the default action of the form. Okay, so now we actually wanna take this data that we uh, have in this form and we want to use it within our JavaScript here. So before we made this scope list, I'm actually missing a semicolon here. Uh, we had the scope list, which was just a list of people. Uh, we can actually also throw a function on here. So we can say scope.addPerson and have this be a function. So we can just say scope.addPerson equals function and then with parentheses and brackets, like just like how we're used to. And Let's go ahead and determine what we're doing within this function. What we're doing is we're going to be pushing a new item into this list. And so we can put scope.list down here, and this is going to be scope.list, and we're gonna use the JavaScript method of push, which allows you to push new items into an array. The new items we're gonna be pushing is an object with a name, colon, and then the name is going to be that scope value from our uh, form here. We had ng model name. So from here we can say scope.name. Okay, and that's going to be comma, and then age is going to be, again, scope.age, like so. So as you can see, uh, when we have this ng model, it's sort of passing around variables onto this scope that we can access with the dollar sign here in JavaScript. 
Now, once we get into the next video, I'm going to show you to use how the controller as syntax that's going to change. Uh, instead of using scope, we're going to be referencing uh, this particular controller. So for now, this works just fine. And let's go ahead and wrap this up with a semicolon at the end here. And now what we want to do is after this, uh, these new items have been pushed into our scope, we want to go back and set these um, scope.name. We want to reset these variables. So scope.name will now be equal to an empty string and scope.age will now just be equal to a number like zero, okay? So to reiterate, on form submit, we're gonna be taking name and age, and we're going to be pushing them using scope.name and scope.age into our scope.lists, which is this item, which is set to a uh, loop here. And what's cool about Angular is that once we, let me refresh this, once we have this new name and age. So let's say we said Jeff and Jeff's age was, let's say 31. We could hit submit. And now we get Jeff at the end of here. And you'll notice that not only did Jeff appear at the end of our list, but our name now became blank and our age reset to zero. So what we can now say is let's just add another one. We can say Jim and Jim is going to be 40. Okay, and what's great about this is now if we start to search, even the new items that we've added to this list are being filtered through with this filter. So this filter is looking through the current scoped variable that we went over, which was scope.list. So now the downside to all of this is if we go for a page refresh, you'll notice any name that we've added is now gone. So there's no persistent data here or anything like that. We're simply just pushing items into an array and Angular saying, hey, there's new items in this array, let me display them. Great, so in the next video, we're going to clean up this controller a little bit using a more organized syntax to allow us to uh, easily be able to define things. So instead of just looking at item in list, we're gonna be knowing what this list directly belongs to its controller and instead of just the scope variable. Cool, so there's a lot more great things to learn about Angular and it's all coming up very soon. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.